Randy Ludwig, the coordinator for college and career readiness for ESM. Thank you for viewing our presentation tonight. We have a lot of great information to share. Tonight, you will hear from three college representatives and one high school counselor as they talk about everything from timelines, deadlines, and college visits, applications, essays, and next steps. This is an informative event that will give you different perspectives from the variety of colleges and help you prepare for the exciting journey of exploring and applying to colleges. This event will remain posted on the website, so you will be able to review it again at any time or share it with others. Thank you and enjoy the presentation. Hi everyone, and welcome to this quick presentation on the college admission process. This video will be focusing on the standard practices for private four-year institutions like Lemoyne College. My name is Hannah Cross and I work as an admission counselor at Lemoyne. I will briefly discuss the necessary materials for a completed college application and important timelines and deadlines to keep an eye out for. Here at Lemoyne, like many other colleges, we utilize a holistic admission review process, which takes into consideration the following factors, but always keeps the whole person in mind. The four most important factors in the admission process are standardized tests, transcripts, recommendations, and your essay. In some cases, interviews are also required or recommended for particular institutions or academic programs. Whether or not a college offers evaluative interviews, we strongly recommend connecting with your admission counselor whenever possible. Every interaction helps us to get to know you a little better. Although still a factor in the college admission process, in recent years, more and more colleges and universities, even highly selective schools, have moved to test optional policies. However, many colleges with test optional policies still accept SAT or ACT scores. Be sure to review test policies for all institutions that you're considering. In some cases, standardized test scores are still required for specific academic programs or merit scholarship consideration. The COVID-19 pandemic has further changed this process in that most colleges and universities move to test optional policies for the fall 2021 admission cycle. This will seemingly continue for many institutions for the fall 2022 admission cycle, but it's unclear yet what the future impact of these changes will be. Additionally, in 2021, the College Board announced the discontinuation of SAT subject tests. One less thing to worry about. Most colleges don't have a preference over whether you submit SAT or ACT scores. If you take both, many institutions will typically super score, which means they'll accept the higher score between the two tests. This is also applicable if you take one or both tests more than once. Admission counselors can often take the highest score from each section to work in your favor. Check out the Kaplan test prep quiz to see if the SAT or ACT exam is a better fit for you. Here at Lemoyne, we have been test optional for admission for several years, relying more heavily on other application factors, such as the high school transcript, essay, recommendation, and personal qualities. Arguably, your transcript is the most important factor in the college admission process. In addition to reviewing initial tools like overall GPA and rank in your class, College admission counselors take a lot of time looking very deeply into your transcript. This includes checking to see the rigor of the coursework that you've taken and how many advanced or honors courses are in your schedule within the offerings at your particular high school. We also look for trends such as increasing level of course rigor or trends in grades, whether down or up. As a New York State school, we also pay special attention to Regents exams. At Lemoyne, we look for students to be on track for an advanced Regents diploma. Review the recommendation requirements for each college that you're applying to. Some require one letter of recommendation to come from your high school counselor, others require one or more teachers, and some require or accept additional recommendations. Junior year teachers are typically a good choice to ask since they instructed you in an upper level class and can speak to your recent academic performances. Be sure to choose someone who knows you well. If the college you're interested in allows more than one letter of recommendation, Consider asking professionals who know your character outside the classroom, like an athletic coach or even an employer. These types of letters give admission counselors a better look into who you are outside of the classroom past your grades. Remember to ask 
for your recommendations way in advance of the deadline to allow your recommender an adequate amount of time to write the letter. Be sure to thank them. A majority of schools accept the Common application found at the link below. If you apply to multiple schools using the Common app, you may use the same essay for several different college applications, but always be sure to double check. Over 900 colleges are active in the Common App Network. Some schools require multiple essays or supplements, which are just as important as your main essay and can be easily attached to your application. It's a common misconception that you need a unique topic for your essay to stand out. Our advice would be to pick a topic that you're comfortable with or passionate about. Keep in mind that we're trying to learn about you. For example, if you're writing an essay about something that another person did that impacted you, be sure to ask yourself if the reader's learning more about that person or about you. If you have a special circumstance that you would like us to consider, we'd suggest using the additional information section rather than explaining it in your essay. Remember to proofread, check for spelling and grammar, and read it out loud to others. This is often the best way to catch mistakes and funky sentences. If others are giving you feedback, remember to keep your essay in your own voice. We wanna read your essay, not theirs. We would encourage you to check in with the admission office to make sure that your application is complete. Next, I'll show you an example of what a student portal might look like. Here's an example of a student portal for a made up student named Patrick. You can see that there are many informative resources for applicants, as well as a checklist for required information. This is how we track missing materials for every student during the application process. Most schools provide a personal login so that you can check your application status at any time. Being organized will help relieve the stress of the application process. Most colleges use email as their primary communication tool, so check your email on a regular basis. It's probably best not to use your high school email address. You might consider creating a separate email account just for college information. This way, no important information gets lost in a crowded inbox. Keeping track of application deadlines can be overwhelming. We would advise you to start a spreadsheet with deadlines during the summer before your senior year. As you become interested in different institutions, record their application deadline in the same spreadsheet. Most colleges begin accepting new applications in August or September. There are four application plans with varying deadlines. First is the early action. It's a fall deadline in which you apply and receive your admission decision, typically by mid-December, but you are not committed to the college. This option ensures that you receive an admission decision early in your senior year and gives you plenty of time to think about your options. Early decision offers a similar timeline, but if you are admitted to the college, you are bound to attend that institution. This should be reserved for your first choice college. Some colleges offer early decision one and early decision two deadlines, so be sure to take notes of those dates. Regular admission Deadlines are typically after the early admission process around January 1st, but must be met in order to be considered for admission. Decisions are usually released by April 1st. Rolling admission means that you can apply at any time in the process on a space available basis. Once your application is completed, you will usually receive a decision in just a few weeks, but you will have until at least the national candidate response date to reply. The national candidate response date, May 1st, is the date in which you must let all institutions that you were admitted to know if you accept or decline your admission offer. This date is applicable for all application options except early decision. An acronym that you will become very familiar with is the FAFSA, or the Free Application for Federal Student Aid. This is a form you will complete every year that the student is enrolled in college. Check out the website through the link on the slide. This form is available to be completed starting in October of the year prior to when you plan to enroll, typically the fall of your senior year of high school. 
Each college will also have a deadline or priority deadline for you to file the FAFSA in order to be considered for need-based financial aid. These are also important dates to include in that spreadsheet. Some colleges and universities also require the CSS profile form, although Lemoyne does not. Some scholarships can be awarded through the admission office based on your high school academic performance. These merit scholarships are usually separate from need-based financial aid, but may have other application requirements such as SAT or ACT scores. If your family experiences changes of jobs or financial circumstances, be sure to communicate with the college's financial aid office so your award package may be altered accordingly. The best way to see what a college is all about is through their social media. Feel free to scan the QR codes on the PowerPoint to visit our Instagram and Facebook pages. Many institutions have extensive information available on their website, but sometimes things can be hard to find. If you ever hit a roadblock, don't hesitate to call the admission office. We're happy to help. Hello everyone, thank you for joining me today. My name is Nolan Garris. I am one of the admissions assistants here at SUNY Morrisville, and I am here today to talk to you about navigating the college website, the college visit, uh, scholarship opportunities, and extracurricular activities in community service. So within this slide, I just decided to do a campus overview of everything SUNY Morrisville, uh, which can be seen in the YouTube video. Uh, we also have a YouTube page, uh, it's a SUNY Morrisville, so feel free to visit that if you'd like. Uh, we have a bunch of videos and we try to upload at least one every week. Um, here at SUNY Morrisville, we offer two-year and four-year programs. Uh, we're mainly an agriculture and technology school, uh, but going beyond that, our most popular majors are individual studies, uh, which is more of like a freelance major, nursing, business administration, criminal justice, uh, and then anything else, again, uh, technology or agriculture related. So the first point I like to talk about is just navigating the college website. Uh, so our school's website is morrisville.edu. And at the top of the page, you can see a bunch of tabs. Um, so there's areas of study, which pretty much lists out all of our uh, programs of interest or majors, um, costs and aid, which kind of gives financial aid, scholarship um, costs, and then just additional um, tuition and fees throughout the school. Uh, life on campus, either as a commuter, residential student, um, and then the IMA page, um, which is for alumni, community members, current students, faculty and staff members, uh, future students, and parents. So the most popular tabs are areas of study and costs and aid. Um, for areas of study, it has all of our majors listed out between the two-year and the four-year programs. Uh, if you're interested in learning more of like what types of classes a student would take for each major. If you go to our search engine and type in college catalog and press enter, uh, there will be a drop down that says college catalog. If you click on that, there's a um, PDF document that lists all of the two year and the four year programs um, out. And within there, there's also um, degree works, uh, which is pretty much like a rough draft schedule um, for each major or program of interest. Um, so you can kind of see like what classes you'd be taking each semester or just the extensive list of classes uh, required in order to obtain that associate or bachelor degree. Uh, the second tab that is the most popular is the costs and aid, aid tab. And um, within there, they have sections for financial aid, um, housing costs and rates, meal plans, uh, scholarships, and then tuition and fees. So the financial aid tab has pretty much um, hyperlinks to you know the FAFSA form, the tuition assistance program, also known as TAP, and then also has some additional information on um, the New York State Excelsior Scholarship as well as the National Pell Grant. Um, the housing costs and rate just pretty much lists the prices um, for every residence hall. So SUNY Morrisville offers both, or excuse me, we offer uh, singles, doubles, suite style living. So it's like two doubles with the common room attached to the middle all the way up to apartment style living, um, which is four singles, uh, one and a half bathroom, living room, dining room, and a kitchen. And then we also have uh, meal plans. So it just gives like a general breakdown of what each meal plan includes. Uh, and then our scholarships tab has, um, our scholarships are for both incoming freshmen as well as continuing students. Um, and there's two separate applications for both of those. Um, so feel free to check out that page to learn more about our scholarship opportunities on campus. And the last section within the costs and aid tab um, is the tuition fees. 
So it kind of gives a breakdown of the overall college costs between um, tuition, mandatory fees, uh, room and board, and then it has uh, differences between FOIA programs um, for non-resident, uh, for non-New York State students, as well as the price breakdown for out-of-state students as well. So the next speaking point is the college visit, uh, which I think is the most popular um, aspect to a student's college search process. SUNY Morrisville is offering in-person visits uh, this current spring semester. So if you are interested in visiting campus um, and want like an official tour and everything, uh, you just have to register through our school's website. Uh, within the campus visit, you can actually meet with an admissions counselor like myself. Uh, we can kind of hash out any questions or concerns you may have. Uh, you receive a full campus tour. Uh, we can pretty much go into any academic building. The only buildings we do not have access to currently um, due to the pandemic is the residence halls just for safety concerns. And then you can also meet with a uh, faculty professor within your program of interest um, so they can kind of talk about, you know, go into greater detail about, you know, what classes they offer and the internship opportunities or the career opportunities that evolve within each program of interest. So as I mentioned earlier, I think the college visit is probably the most crucial part to a student's uh, overall college search process. Um, it's one thing to look on photos of college campus online, um, but it's a completely different aspect when you're actually physically on campus. Um, I think once you're physically on campus, uh, students have that internal feeling, um, whether they know if you know, this is the right fit for them, uh, where they can see themselves living on campus you know, for the two or four year time period. Um, so I always recommend to students and family members um, visit any college campus that you're interested in. Um, just get a general gauge of you know, how you feel once you're actually in that personal environment overall. So my next speaking point is the scholarship opportunities. Um, so I kind of mentioned it a little bit earlier in some previous slides, but SUNY Morrisville does offer scholarships for both incoming freshmen as well as returning students. Uh, there's two separate applications for both of them. Um, so there's the Mustang scholarship application for incoming freshmen, and then there's a foundation scholarship application for returning or continuing students. So for our incoming freshman scholarships, um, we have three tiers overall this year. We have the Presidential Award, which is the highest tier scholarship, uh, which is $3,000 a year. And they actually break it down by semester, so it's like $1,500 for each semester. Uh, and students just have to be a full-time uh, enrolled student, reside on campus, and then have a GPA of 3.0 or higher in order to receive the scholarship for future years to come. The second tier is our trustees award, um, which is $2,000 a year, so $1,000 per semester. And they also have to keep a 3.0 GPA or higher. And the last tier scholarship is the dean's award, um, which is $1,000 for a full year, so $500 per semester. And they also have to keep a 3.0 GPA or higher in order to maintain the scholarship. So my next speaking point is extracurricular activities. Um, so SUNY Morrisville offers Division Three athletics. Um, so in the fall time, we have cross country, soccer, field hockey, football, and volleyball. In the winter time, we offer basketball and ice hockey. And then in the springtime, we offer lacrosse, softball, uh, and golf. Um, the equestrian teams pretty much, I think, happen throughout the whole entire academic year. So between both the um, fall, winter, and spring uh, semesters, I'd say. Um, say if you do not want to make the commitment to a Division three sport, that's totally okay. Um, SUNY Morrisville offers uh, intramural or recreational activities. So a lot of the times, um, those are more of like your laid-back co-ed um, activities. They're more gym-related, I'd say. So like they'll do volleyball tournaments, three-on-three uh, -three basketball tournaments, uh, flag football, kickball, softball, um, anything that's gym-related, they pretty much will offer as an intramural or recreational sport. Going beyond our Division Three athletics and intramural and recreational activities, SUNY Morrisville also has a student government organization, uh, which is comprised of like the student clubs and organizations. So SUNY Morrisville has about 40 plus clubs and organizations on campus. Uh, it's pretty much open for anyone that's willing to join the club or organization. Uh, they can range from anything from academic related, so like automotive and engineering club are uh, two current ones, all the way through um, ethnic or religious affiliated clubs and organizations. I think the most popular club on campus right now is the video game club, um, just because of the pandemic. There hasn't been much to do, so students can just play video games, uh, interact with others that way. 
Um, but going beyond that, we also have um, student activities. So typically, uh, we have about 250 plus student activity events throughout the whole entire academic year. Anything ranging from like uh, movies on demand night. So we have a theater right on campus where they'll preview um, movies that are in like regal cinemas free of charge for students. Um, all the way through, you know, carnival nights. Um, they'll bring in like vin ventriloquists and comedians uh, and anything else. Uh, and they pretty much have a digest email that runs every Tuesday and Thursday, kind of giving like the lowdown of what's happening on campus. Um, so there's always a lot to do on campus going beyond just the general academic aspect. Thank you very much for listening to my presentation and learning more about SUNY Morrisville. Uh, if you do have any questions, comments, or concerns, feel free to reach out to me. Uh, my email is garrisnt at morrisville.edu, and my office cell is 315-684-6139. Thank you. Hi, everybody. My name is Alex from Onondaga Community College. I'm happy to join you and share a bit of information with you. Share my screen quick. And a few things I wanted to talk about, the community college admissions process and how it differs from a four-year school, placement testing, GPA, and housing, our two plus two agreements, as well as just some other transfer possibilities, and then commuting versus living on campus. Um, so we're gonna dive into those. The first thing that we're gonna talk about is the difference between the community college admissions process and the four-year admissions process. So with Onondaga Community College, aside from a few of our health professions, which I'll talk about in a second, um, our application is going to look very, very different from a four-year school. We do not require any testing, so SAT, ACT. Um, we have no personal essay, letter of recommendation requirements, things like that. Really, all we need is your application on file um, and then a high school diploma or its equivalent. So, of course, if you're a senior this year, um, send us in your transcript. It's not finalized yet because you haven't actually graduated, but we'll get that final copy in the summer and you'll be good to go. Um, if you are um, looking for any more information on that, um, again, I'm going to share my contact information with everybody. Anything in relation to the application process, feel free to reach out. Um, also, Haley Warren is the OCC Advantage Connection Coach over at ESM. Hopefully, you all have met her or know her, um, but she's a great resource as well. So let me share my screen again quick. I'm going to take you to OCC's homepage. This is the homepage of our website. Um, it's a pretty easy website to navigate, but I'm going to show you a couple quick little tips. Our free application is right here on the homepage of our website. You'll click apply, and then you'll click complete our application for admission. This is going to take you through four pages that look pretty similar to this. Once you apply, the next thing you're going to need to do is send us your high school transcripts. So students reach out to your counselor, say, hey, can you send my transcripts to OCC? They'll know exactly how to do that. We'll get those and we'll get you accepted uh, very quickly. The other thing I mentioned in the beginning, uh, how our application process differs for some of our health professions. For any students interested in nursing or our physical therapist assistant program or a few other surgical technology, um, that application process does look a bit different. Those are very competitive programs that have caps on the number of students we can admit per semester. Um, so there is a, a few more extra steps to those applications. We have a TEAS exam requirement that's kind of used as a national uh, nursing entrance exam. There's a couple of prerequisites, making sure that your biology um, and chemistry and math and English are, are all up to a certain level. Um, but so again, about 95% of our programs at OCC, the admissions criteria is a high school diploma or its equivalent. A couple others we have um, are going to be a bit different. Um, so to pop back over to my slide, the next thing I want to talk about is placement testing, GPA, and housing. So there's no requirement for placement testing at OCC. The way we determine your placement is by looking at your high school transcript, looking at what kind of classes you took, and figuring out what the ideal next step would be. Um, similar thing with our uh, health admissions process. We, for a lot of those prerequisites, are just going to look directly at your high school transcript to see if you have the biology, see if you have the chemistry. Um, GPA, we will mention GPA. Your GPA in the classes that you take in high school, again, are going to go towards the placement, um, but there are no hard, you know, you need an 85 to get an acceptance letter from us. You need a, an 80 to be accepted, things like that. Um, the last thing I'm going to mention is housing, which I'll talk about down on the commuting versus living on campus slide. 
um, two plus two transfer agreements. So there's a few differences between our transfer agreements. And I'm going to take you to a page on our website that's going to break down some information for you. And again, I'm going to walk you there so you know exactly how to get there. If you go from our homepage, you'll type in transfer right in the search box. Click search. That will take you to a page that says transfer assistance. Go down here. As you can see, about 70 to 80% of OCC students plan to transfer onto a four year school. Um, again, a lot of our students are using OCC as a great foundation to then go on and study and finish their education at a four year school. Um, you'll look down here and you'll see transfer agreements. There's two types of transfer agreements there's dual admission agreements, those are programs where you're going to apply to uh, two schools essentially at the same time, and you're choosing a specific program, um, as long as you complete your specific requirements at OCC, um, you're going to be guaranteed acceptance to that four-year school. So here you can see some of the schools that we have dual admission agreements with. Um, the transfer and articulation agreements are similar. Um, they, uh, as long as you are able to apply on your own terms, um, and get accepted, they will guarantee that you're accepted with junior status. So some that I wanted to point out specifically, um, we have a plethora of transfer agreements with uh, ESF. Um, again, really great relationships with other SUNY schools. So Oswego, Cortland, Brockport, Oneonta, um, Geneseo, really great relationships with those schools. SUNY Upstate is also a really big one for us. Um, we have a great partnership for students who complete their RN at OCC to move on and, and continue their nursing education. So that's just a little bit on transferring. Again, you know, once you decide, if you decide that OCC is going to be your school, um, there's a lot of great resources up here on our campus um, to assist you with the transfer process. The last thing I want to talk about, and I'm just going to share my screen with the presentation again, um, is going to be commuting versus living on campus. So you guys all go to ESM. Um, you're close to OCC. I imagine you're anywhere from 15 to about 25 minutes away from our campus. A um, couple pros and cons to living on campus. You know, you're going to get that full college experience. You're going to move into a dorm. You're going to meet some new roommates. You're going to have friends down the hall, things like that. There's going to be a bit more social opportunity. Um, there's a lot of great clubs and activities on campus. If you're living here, you're spending more time on campus, you're not leaving as much, which gives you more opportunities to get involved and, and really see what the full campus has to offer. Another great perk to living on campus is potentially becoming an RA. Um, so that is a, a position you'll get inside the residence halls where you get you know, quite a bit more responsibility. Um, you're kind of overseeing an area or the floor or part of a building. Um, in exchange, you get free housing and a discounted meal plan. Um, so Again, if you're staying close to home and you want to find a way to continue to make college as affordable as possible, but still get the college experience, um, becoming an RA is a really great uh, opportunity. Some pros for commuting. Again, you guys live pretty close. So as long as you have reliable means of transportation, you're going to save money. Um, I know that's a goal. It was a goal of mine when I was going to school. It, it's probably a goal of most of you, if not your parents as well, um, saving as much money as possible. OCC provides a great platform to do that, um, and commuting only will enhance uh, enhance the savings. You're not on campus on days you don't need to be. You know, if you have classes stacked up on a Tuesday, Thursday, or maybe you don't have Friday class, uh, if you work a part-time job or have other things going on in your life, you're not bound to fully being on campus all the time. So if you wanted to have a bit more freedom in some other areas of your life, um, commuting kind of gives you the flexibility for that. And last but not least, some good home cooking. Um, you know, students who live on campus have meal plans. There's places to go around the area to buy food. There's kitchens in the dorms, things like that. Um, but there's there's nothing like mom's cooking or dad's cooking. So um, some kind of some secondary perks that you may not even really think of um, about commuting. So as you can see in this bottom corner, my contact information is down here. Feel free to email me, text me, call me. Um, that's all there. So to definitely jot that down again, happy to, to join you all. Uh, hopefully we can get back soon to being able to do these things in person. Um, but again, any questions, feel free to reach out. I'm glad I could join you and thank you very much.
Hi, my name is Mike White. I'm one of the school counselors at the high school. I will be discussing the counseling department's uh, view on this process and, and what it looks like from the high school perspective. You have heard from all the college reps as they break down the pieces of the application. I have one more unique piece of the application to break down as well, and then I will share an overview of what needs to be done and when. I will be using the counseling department's website as the tool to explain these things and to show resources. As you can see, our web address is esmschools.org backslash CHS counseling. The first unique item I am going to talk about is something called special talents. There are several kinds of special talents. One is in athletics. If you have a rising senior who will be playing college athletics, there are some pieces to this process that are worth knowing. If your student athlete is going to be a division three athlete, which many of our students are, there's not a whole lot that needs to be done other than to communicate with the college coach as well as the high school coach. If your child is one of the unique students who might be competing at the division one or division two level, communication with coaches at the college as well as coaches at the high school are important, but your child will also have to register with the NCAA at the NCAA clearinghouse.net website that you see on our screen. The counselor's role with the NCAA is minimal. We send a transcript when a student requests it to the NCAA for review, and that's about it. Other special talents include things like art, performing arts, architecture, film. Students who might be pursuing majors in these areas may be required to create a portfolio or do an audition. If this is the case for your child, it's really important to know that portfolios and auditions sometimes have different deadlines from the college application themselves. It will be very important for your child to look closely at the websites of each college to find out if they need a portfolio or audition, as well as talk to their school counselor. Now it is time to talk about timelines and what I should be doing when. Often in these presentations, you receive a lot of information, but you're not quite clear of where to start. I'm going to start with the end in mind. So 12th grade, as you can see, we have a tab here. We will meet with all of your students to talk about the college process immediately in the fall of senior year. It's important to note that the college process has two distinct parts to it. There is applying for financial aid, which the your student will need your support as a parent to complete. And then there's applying for the college admissions process, whether they get into the college or not. And that's a relatively independent part uh, that the student does on their own. Both for admissions and financial aid, we will provide checklists, which I will show you here, um, and meetings to support your child. So as you will see in this senior meeting packet, your child will receive one similar to this that has information about registering for the SAT and ACT. It will have a checklist of step-by-step -step everything your child needs to do to properly apply for financial aid. This is done as of October 1st of your child's senior year. We have two-year college checklists that break down the unique process to two-year colleges that walks students through step-by-step -step with hyperlinks for important pieces that they need to complete. We also have four-year college checklists where they will go through again, step-by-step. -step. These checklists will make sure your child completes the application fully. We have spots for usernames and passwords as well as some information that helps your child to fill out the college application. They will receive a lot of supports. That's wonderful for the future, but what should my child be doing now? So on our 11th grade page, you will see at the very bottom of our page are some meeting materials. We are currently meeting with juniors in their junior meeting. It's a one-on-one -on -one meeting where we talk about their future plans. We review their transcripts, their courses for next year, 
and how that relates to their future college plans and what they may want to study. In this 11th grade meeting materials, you will see there is a campus visit checklist. As you heard, it's important to visit campuses. Often folks don't know what to look for or what questions to ask. This handout provides information for both. It may be useful to bring with you when you go on campus visits. We also talk about the junior college planning guide. This shows what students should be doing and when. We have broken it down by time frame. So in the spring of their junior year, these five items down below are the things we believe they should be doing to be ready for the fall. Researching colleges and creating lists. Visiting colleges, including that may include virtual visits. The SAT or ACT, as you heard earlier, most two-year colleges do not require them, but many four-year colleges will. Talking to teachers about letters of recommendation. Traditionally, three letters are needed for four-year colleges, one from a counselor, two from teachers, and we have informed our juniors in their meeting they should be talking to two teachers right now and focus on their grades. We continue to give them information about what should they be doing over the summer and what is coming for them in the fall. Again, in the fall, we will meet with your senior right away. We will teach them how to apply to college because they don't know how to do it. We don't expect them to know how. We will provide checklists as well as additional supports throughout the fall. The timeline is when your child returns in the fall, we will meet with them and they will start college applications with the goal of completing them by Thanksgiving break. Then in the spring, they will start hearing whether they were accepted into colleges or not. In May 1st, they will make a commitment to a college. Now that you've heard the general timeline and you've seen the resources that explain that timeline of what your students should be doing and when, there are some additional items that you've heard about tonight that you still may have questions about. Like you heard your child may need to sit for the SAT or ACT exam. How would they sign up for it? The next page in this guideline shows you how to do just that. It's in a question and answer format. Like, do I need to take the SAT and or ACT? And the answers are below. We have the websites of where your student registers. They must register on their own on this website. It has information about the fees for these exams, the dates of the exams, as well as the registration deadline. As you heard earlier, the SAT and ACT are tests you can take more than once. And so you will see multiple dates here if you so choose. Questions about the cost of exams, as well as if you are a student with testing accommodations, and additionally, information about how eventually you will send your scores to colleges and ways that you can save money by getting some free score reports. Next, we have a section dedicated to what colleges look for. These are the items that you heard about this evening. A bunch of helpful web pages, including the Naviance program that your child can use to research colleges, look up scholarships, collect uh, personal information about careers, develop resumes, as well as places for the usernames and passwords for the SAT or ACT. A lot of resources related to financial aid. You as a parent or guardian may find this more interesting than your child at this point in time. If your child is feeling really ambitious and wants to start looking for scholarships, here are some suggestions of places that you can begin doing so. We also gave all of our juniors, or we are currently giving our juniors homework in their junior meeting. We ask them to go into their Naviance account, create a resume for three reasons. One, the resume in Naviance can be formatted and printed for them to use on job interviews should they decide to pursue a job. Two, when they are applying to colleges, they will be asked to list their extracurricular activities, work experience, volunteer experience. Having it in Naviance will make their lives easier. And three, awards and scholarships start popping up for students in junior and senior year. As school counselors, we will review their Naviance account 
and look at their list of activities. So if a scholarship or award pops up that they may be eligible for, we will make your, your student child know about that. There are also places we have steps on how to research colleges, which is one of the items we discussed earlier. As we go forward, please continue to check us out on Facebook and Instagram, utilize our website, and stay up to date with our monthly newsletter that we email. For general questions, please feel free to reference our website at any time. We try to keep it very up to date with relevant information. If you have specific questions to your child or about the college process, please do not hesitate to contact your student's school counselor.